Did you know that one in four items thrown away in recycling bins aren't actually recyclable? And this causes the US recycling industry over $500 million of extra costs annually. And to help this, our team made an app that helped you determine whether or not the next piece of trash you're about to throw away was recyclable or whether or not it belonged in the trash. And this app won first place in an MLH hackathon out of over 30 other teams in my school. And the reason it won is because we were able to clearly identify and outline that our app helped environmentally conscious people dispose of their trash properly. It helped recycling plants not have to deal with extra costs of sorting out trash that was supposed to be not supposed to be in recycling bins and vice versa. And it also helped, you know, corporate companies. We were also going to have a page of different discounts and promo codes for our users. So it helped corporate companies give our users more discounts to encourage our users to use more sustainable products and be more envir environmentally conscious while also helping the company's image. But at the end of the day, it helps our most important and fourth stakeholder, the environment. This is machine learning helping the environment. What kind of project have you ever seen done this before? And to train our model, we used the TACO data set, which had about 5,000 different images of about 80 different types of trash or recyclables with the name of the label as well as the bounding box drawn around the piece of trash so that when we give our model a picture, it can identify what piece of trash we show the, we show the camera as well as whether or not it's recyclable or belongs in the trash. And based on that classification, it can also draw the bounding box around that piece of trash to showcase to the user that it's actually, you know, classifying the right object and not some object in the background. And so to make this model, we used the MobileNet V2 as our first layer, that's gonna be our feature extractor, that's already pre-trained on the image net weights. So it's about hundreds of thousands of different image and image recognition tasks. We use that pre-trained layer and then connect it with the convolutional layer, 2D layer, as well as use global, global pooling, dropout, and a bunch of other things. And at the end of the day, our model outputs two different things. So yes, our model has two output layers somehow. Oh, excuse me? Okay. And because our, again, our model classifies the object, but at the same time, it's using regression to output the coordinates of those pixels around the object to make the bounding box. To do this, we had to use two loss functions, where for the label we used categorical cross entropy to classify the label of trash, but also we had to use binary cross entropy for the bounding box. And you might think, why the heck would we use binary cross entropy for a regression task? A pre-processing step I had to use to speed up training was convert the outputs of the bounding boxes as pixels into percentages of the image. So the X was located at 30% of the image and the Y was located at 20% to get that coordinate, which you could convert back into, you know, X, Y pixel coordinates anyway. So it just kind of helps speed up training because again, this was made in 24 hours and 10 hours in when training was, you know, taking too long because we didn't have a GPU. I used up all the Google, Google Cola GPU out, GPU resources. I had to kind of cut corners to get this to be something that we could present on Sunday the next next morning. But our model is only useful if we actually take it outside of the notebook and deploy it into the real world. And the real world in this case being our React app. And we chose React just because we were familiar with it and it was pretty easy to get quick up and running. We used TensorFlow.js to upload the model and we had a lot of problems uploading a functional model in TensorFlow.js for some reason. But I ended up getting something to work where I was able to output the class as well as the bounding box on a webcam on a React canvas. And we chose React because we knew that we could make this into a useful React component. Or if we wanted to make this a mobile app, we can convert our React app quickly into React Native if we learned how to use React Native and make it again into an easy mobile app where we can use the user's you know, front or back facing camera. Our app also has a product recommendations page, which based on the pieces of trash or the pieces of recyclables you show the camera, it's gonna recommend you more sustainable versions of those products. So if I keep showing the app that I'm throwing away these recycling bottles, it's gonna hopefully recommend me a reusable water bottle so that I'm throwing away less items and producing less trash. And in 24 hours, our team was able to make this app, use this model and pitch it successfully to win first place. And so whenever you're thinking of project ideas to do for your next hackathon or just for your resume that are machine learning based, think outside the box. Don't just do MNIST digit classification. You can do it to learn how it works, but don't have that as your project. 
Think big. Think how we can help the people around you and the environment and the city around you because this is how our team thought and this is what made us choose this project. And the reason our team was so successful in this competition was because we were able to think about how we can use these tools to help our communities around us, and not just our communities, but help the entire planet out, right? How can you say no to that as a judge, right? You can't because we thought heavily about how the, all those four different people, three different people that we're going to use our app as well as it helping the environment, right? And this is an example of a machine learning app that can, you know, help the environment and bring us towards a more greener and sustainable world.